Luke 22. Actually, we will read just two verses, 41 and 42. <clears throat> and I'm reading in your hearing from the King James Version. Yes, sir. Luke 22, 41 and 42. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast. And kneeled down and prayed, <clears throat> saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Lord have mercy. I want to read that verse one more time. Say, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Lord have mercy. The grass with us. And the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. Yes. Amen. With your prayers and the help of the Lord, I want to talk about my will versus thy will. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want to say something about. I just want to talk to you for a minute here. My will versus thy will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you feel me on that? My matter of fact, why don't you say it with me? My will, my will. versus thy will. Amen. 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 Perhaps the greatest challenge to those of us in the Christian faith is to learn how to surrender our will to God's will. Huh? Perhaps this is the greatest feat of them all. To learn finally how to surrender our will to God's will. I don't know if there's a task more difficult or daunting for the Christian sojourner than to learn how to give up our will in order to follow God's will. I can hardly think of anything else more tough and tedious, more rough yet righteous than learning how to place our will below God's will. How to place God's will above our will and how to walk humbly before the Lord. I don't, I don't know, church. I don't know, child of God, if anything can top that. The difficulty of the daily challenge to put our will in the back seat while putting God's will in the front. I don't, I don't know if there's a task more taxing or a task more trying than putting what we want to do aside while putting what God wants us to do ahead. Is there anybody in here listening to me who will admit that perhaps you haven't always been so holy and you haven't always been so right and perhaps you haven't always been in church on Sunday morning? Somebody here knows today the struggle that I am talking about, how hard it can be to, cook, to put God's will before our will. Somebody here knows it's not always convenient nor easy 
to forgive those who've done you wrong. Somebody here knows it's not always convenient nor easy to love those you don't even like. It's not always convenient nor easy to go to church when you don't feel like it. It's not always convenient nor easy to believe when you feel you've been betrayed. It's not always convenient nor easy to have faith when you feel you've been forgotten. It's not always convenient nor easy to feel good when you feel you've been taken for granted. It's not always convenient nor easy to hold your tongue when you'd rather cuss. Nor to hold your peace when you must rather raise some hell. I said that perhaps the greatest challenge to those of us in the Christian faith is to learn how to surrender our will to God's will. To those of us in the Christian faith. To those of us in the Christian faith. To those of us in the Christian faith who have by grace and through faith freely receive the mercy of the Lord upon our sins and transgressions that we might be forever forgiven. To those of us in the Christian faith who have received the love of God as expressed by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. To those of us in the Christian faith who have been born again, baptized, and bought with a bloody price. To those of us in the Christian faith whose sins have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. For those of us in the Christian faith who were on our way to a burning hell but are now on our way to a glorious heaven. To those of us in the Christian faith who have been called out of darkness, who've been called out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness. Yes, you, come here. I know you didn't know it, but you've been called out of darkness. Come here. I know you don't want to hear it, but you have been called out of darkness. Come closer. Come here. I know you want to remain there because you have resided there for so long. But come here out of darkness into this marvelous light. To those of us in the Christian faith who went from a sentence of death to the tree of life. To those of us in the Christian faith who have been sanctified and set aside. To those of us in the Christian faith who have been made right with God through the crucifixion of Christ on Calvary's cross. Yes, I'm talking to you. You are to know today and by now that no matter how difficult, no matter how tough, no matter how hard it may be to surrender our will to God's will, you need to know that it's the only thing, and I mean the only thing, that God is expecting you to do. You need to know that today. It is the only thing. Somebody say only thing. You ain't got to try to memorize the whole Bible. Just know that it is the only thing that God is expecting you to do. You need to know today, church, that that's your job. You need to know that's your Christian obligation. It's your Christian assignment, Carol. It's your Christian duty unto God, not to the pastor, but unto God. Not to your mother or your father, but to God. Not to the folks at the church, but unto God. It is your duty unto God to express gratitude for his love while expressing your love through obedience to him. It is the only thing that God is expecting you to do. Too much has been given by him and received by us. 
for us to not give back as we should to him. I said that perhaps the greatest challenge to those of us in the Christian faith is to learn how to surrender our will to God's will. And even the Holy Word of God shows our precious Savior struggling to do torrents the same thing. To surrender his will to God's will. You, you read it in the text here. He is in the garden of Gethsemane. It doesn't have to be resurrection Sunday season for us to go to the garden of Gethsemane. Here he is in the garden of Gethsemane. Burned under the weight of his approaching death. He was approaching his death as we all are. As a matter of fact, huh? as you are and as I and he was approaching his death. The various changes in your body oh, yeah. and the various changes in your health Come on, are the things that comprise the weight uh -huh. of our approaching death. Yeah, and as you feel the weight of life on you, yeah. and as you feel the weight of existence upon you, we all know that we can go to God in prayer. You know that today, don't you? You do know that you can go to God and you should go to God and you ought to go to God and you need to go to God in prayer, don't you? Oh, and that's just what Jesus did. Verse 41 says to us that he kneeled down and prayed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in trouble, so he kneel down and pray. He needed some help. So he kneeled down and prayed. Uh, the disciples, they wouldn't help him. They were too sheep. They, they, they were too tired. So he kneeled down and prayed. The scripture says, Jesus, Frederick, kneeled down and prayed. And I'm wondering today that if Jesus God the Son got on his knees to pray to God the Father, then what are you doing with your prayer life? Why are you always so argumentative and fussy? I'll tell you why. You ain't been on your knees in prayer. Why are you always so upset and discombobulated? I'll tell you why. You ain't been on your knees in prayer. Why are you always moaning and groaning and complaining and projecting negative energy into the house of life. I'll tell you why. You ain't been on your knees in prayer. And I know you haven't been on your knees in prayer because when you spend time with God privately, it will be displayed publicly. When you spend time with God privately, it will be displayed openly. When you spend time with God privately, it will be displayed plainly. Come here, Bible reader. Exodus 34, 29 says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hand, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the law. Lord, how I wish we had more people in this church spending time with the Lord and speaking to him. We off the phone talking so much with everybody else and spend some time speaking with him. Or oh, even Jesus kneeled, Kim. Down and prayed. Father, if thou be willing, Lord have mercy. If thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, sister Yvette. But thine be done. Now 
Now we all understand that Jesus, as God the Son, didn't necessarily need to pray. You understand? But I believe he did so to show us the importance of prayer. That if he took the time to do it, then so should we. And in this particular instance, then, are we find Jesus praying because Madonna, he's in trouble. Now make no mistake about it, Bob, Jesus would oftentimes steal away to pray. And not just when he was in trouble either, but Jesus would pray. And I don't think it's a mere coincidence, church, that this Jesus, who often prayed, was also one saying that he was sent by God to do his father's will. Stay with me because I'm almost done. He, he, he was one always saying that he was sent by God to do his father's will. The last part of John 5 verse 30, Jesus said, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the father which hath sent me. This is Jesus talking, y'all. In John 6, 38, he said, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. I'm glad to see you in your Bible. I want some people taking notes in here because I'm going to start asking you, what did I say this morning? I asked them both last Sunday after church, what did I say? And they couldn't tell me. They here today. I'm not going to put you on blast. But you ain't by yourself. If I didn't ask anybody else, they wouldn't have been able to tell me neither. Except Brother Miles. Because he takes my sermons and preach them all week long down at the shop. Uh, 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 this is Jesus we're talking about, y'all. That's him talking about himself. But he even talked about you. When he said in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Here it is. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. In Matthew 12 and 50, he said, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. And even David, Alice, she's taking notes too, said that we ought to, he said something, David said something to us that ought to be in all of our prayers tonight and forevermore. Yeah. In Psalm 143 and 10, when he simply said, teach me to do thy will. That's what he said in Psalm 143, 143 and 10. Hit the fact check it for yourself. He said, teach me. Lord, have mercy to do that. Well, Lord, I wish I had more people in this church who cared about doing God's will rather than their own. I wish there were more people in this church. I look at you in your face. I'm not afraid. The Bible told me to fear not their faces. I wish there were more people in this church who were concerned more about God's will than their own will. Lord, how I wish. I don't think it's a coincidence that Jesus, who prayed often, was once saying that he was sent by God to do the Father's will. Because you see, prayer is one of the best ways for you to learn how to surrender your will to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's, it. that's it. That's it. You see, because the more you pray, the more you will surrender. The more you pray, the more you will submit. And the more you pray, the more you will soften your own heart and will subject yourself to his holy will. Now, if you're praying but remaining stubborn, and if you're praying but never realizing, never aware of when you are the one operating outside of God's will, then that's a whole other problem that we're going to have to address another day. 
But Jesus, only being concerned with his father's will, said, if thou be willing, please remove this cup from me. Now we all are familiar with this part of the prayer, aren't we? We, we all say this part of the prayer when we are in trouble. Don't we? Lord, please remove this cup. Lord, please take it away. Lord, please get me out of this mess. Lord, please help me out here. Lord, please pick me up. Lord, please turn me around. Lord, please save me. We all know something about that part of the prayer. But the immature Christian stops there. The undeveloped Christian stops there. The childish Christian stops there. Without ever going further. Ah, but once you get serious, anybody trying to get serious with the law? Oh, it's weak right through here. Is there anybody trying to get serious with your faith? <laughs> Lord, help us today. I said, once you get serious with your faith, realizing that judgment day is coming soon. Once you get serious with your faith, have understanding that God will not be mocked. And once you get serious with your faith, knowing that he's going to hold you accountable for how you treated him and one another, or you'll get to learn how to be eager to run to the rest of the prayer. You won't stop just with me. Lord, remove this cup from me. It's all about me. Just do it for me. Remember me. Hear me. See me. Bless me. Touch me. Deliver me. Heal me. You won't stop just with me when you grow up in your faith. But you will move beyond the one dimensional me. You will move beyond the selfish me. You will move beyond the surface, greedy, narcissistic, egotistical, arrogant, and narrow me. And you will move on to him. You don't move on with him. You got to move past yourself. Jenkins, you got to move past yourself and get to him. You hear me on the left side? You got to move past yourself. You got to get to him on the right. You got to move past yourself and get to him. Yeah, you got to get to him. Because you see, it's easy to pray. Lord, do it for me. That's what the song says. Do it for me right now. We like that, don't we? Lord, do it. Lord, do it. What y'all trying to get me doing? Right? Lord, do it for me. Lord, do it for me. We're be hungry, y'all. I got to go. We 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 like that song and we like that prayer. But you see, church, you gotta understand. You gotta understand. You must understand that that's basic faith. Yeah, yeah. That's elementary faith. Yeah, that that that's beginner's faith. Uh huh. Yeah, that, and it's all right when that's where you are. But it's a different level to pray. Nevertheless, Lord, I'll do it for you. You see, that's a different level. That's a different elevation. That's a different height in the faith and in the Lord. When you move beyond me and get to him and start talking about, nevertheless, Lord, I'll do it for you. When will we grow? And when will we go from only praying superficially, Lord, do it for me, to nevertheless, Lord, I'll do it for you. To nevertheless, Lord, I'll follow you. To nevertheless, Lord, I'll obey you. To nevertheless, Lord, I'll surrender to you. To nevertheless, Lord, I'll submit to you. To nevertheless, Lord, not my will. 
but thy will be done. How many Gethsemanes do you have to experience before you arrive? Huh? How many crosses do you have to face before you get it? How much suffering? How much suffering? How much suffering do you have to endure before you learn that it's dangerous to follow your will? Yeah. I had to say it like that. Let me say it again. When will you discover that it's dangerous to follow your will? But far safer to follow his. And watch this. I'm done. But even if there's bitterness in the cup, even if there's pain in the cup, even, 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 even. I know I'm talking to somebody who probably cried some tears just on last week. Even if there are some tears in the cup. Even if, even if there is heartache and heartbreak in the cup. Anybody ever been disappointed before? Even if there's disappointment in the cup. I want you to know if the cup is his will for you, then you better off with the cup of trials and tribulation than you are with the cup of ease. Why? Here it is, y'all, and I'm out your way. Simply because of this one thing, you can trust God's will for you. That's it. That's that. That's why you better off with the cup. And following his will than trying to do your own thing because Nadine, you can trust. <laughs> the church is supposed to be the storehouse of folks who trust in the Lord. And yet it seems that we struggle so mightily to do just that. Let me say it again. You can trust God's will for you. You might not want it, but there's something in that cup for you. You might not like it, but there's something in the cup for you. And Jesus shows us that it's all right to make your request before the Lord. Oh, but he also shows us that you ought to understand that it's always better for you to want his will to override your will than for your will to always override his. I had to even consider what might have happened to my salvation if God had honored Jesus' will and removed his bit of cup. I don't even want to think about that because my salvation was connected to his cup. And, and, and you might not understand or realize the church, but your cup of despair and your cup of distress and your cup of dismay is also connected to others' salvation too. Certainly I don't mean that you can save someone's soul, but you can encourage someone as a result of what you've been through. You, you can comfort someone as a result of what you've had in your cup. <laughs> you, you can help someone as a result of what you have in you. Man in Bible study last week came in to leave his offering. Heard someone testifying about their battles with cancer. He stopped and said, I want to tell you that I've been there. Lord have mercy. He said, I had to drink from the same cup. And I've seen the hand of God at work in my life. So I know now that he can work in your life. Too. Sister Wyoming told me last night the same thing. She said, I'm learning. Boy, do we need a spirit of learning in the church. 
She said, I learned that I can help others in their trial and their tribulation because of how the Lord has helped me in mine. In other words, she said, it's because I had to drink from that cup. It's because I had to sip from that cup. It's because I had to indulge from that cup that I can now help others to drink there. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. When it comes to my will versus that will, you need to learn that it's better for your will to You need to start letting his will win. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. I heard a preacher say you ought not be so busy trying to rack up victories against the devil. But you need to rack up more losses against the Lord. That's what we need in here today. We need, we need more people willing to lose to God. Uh -huh. Anybody in here ready? Anybody in here willing? Are you willing to start losing to the Lord? Don't fool me. Don't fool me. How about over here? Anybody over here? Are you ready in this sixth month of 2023 to start losing to the Lord? It's going to require some humility. That's what you need. It's going to require some humility. You, you, you've got to develop and acquire a taste for him. That you might have a greater appetite for his word. And realize there that you can find all of the joy unspeakable. And all of the peace unsurpassable. When you finally surrender and submit your will to the Lord, God be praised. The doors of the church are open. My will versus thy will. God bless you, Facebook. There may be someone here who has not experienced.